so for module three we're discussing curriculum decisions uh, now because I don't have my own classroom just yet it's kind of difficult to answer these questions based on curriculum that I'm teaching so instead I solicited responses from three of my colleagues um, I currently work at a bilingual French American middle school it's an independent school um, and the three people that I talk to play three different roles in the school uh, Stacy is the head of school and she formerly taught English uh, the second person Suzanne is an English teacher for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And then the third person, Sue, also teaches 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, and she's the curriculum coordinator for the English department. Um, so the questions that I asked them were specifically dealing with the English curriculum because it's very separate from our French curriculum. Um, so what I found interesting about their three responses to some of the questions is that uh, well, first of all, there were a lot of similarities across the board. And then second, I found that when they were different, they were definitely um, reflective of their roles in the school. So, for example, in defining curriculum, Stacy, who's coming from the administrative perspective as the head of the school, um, definitely focused on kind of top-down curriculum. So in defining curriculum, she said that it has to focus on the pedagogical decisions of the school and the theories that the school has decided to practice. Um, she sees it as a big picture framework and feels like everyone should have a singular view of what the curriculum looks like in order for it to be successful and effective. Suzanne, who, um, whose role is as the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade English teacher, um, her perspective was definitely reflective of her role as a teacher, and she stated very simply and very matter-of-factly that curriculum is everything that goes on in the classroom. Sue kind of acts as a middle ground because on the one hand she's in the classroom as um, as an English teacher and on the other hand she's a curriculum coordinator which is definitely more aligned with the administrative side um, so her answer is very reflective of that and that she discussed the design of the learning opportunities and assessment of the school and the, and she also inferred that the decisions are definitely made from either curriculum coordinators or from other administrators um, she said that curriculum when effective and successful it serves as a means of reflection for both the student and the teacher. Um, when discussing the official curriculum, all three of the people that I spoke to mentioned the move towards the Common Core Standards this year. Uh, though independent schools are pretty free to do what they want, uh, the Common Core definitely provides a framework and clear objectives. Um, all three also emphasized a need to push towards a critical thinking focused curriculum. Um, they also said that we don't necessarily have a, an, an official curriculum right now and that because they're making this move towards the Common Core Standards, this year is about defining what the curriculum is going to be. Now because of that, um, it's hard to determine what the enacted curriculum is because this year the curriculum is definitely ever-evolving. Um, one thing that Sue, who's the curriculum coordinator and English teacher, emphasized was that this year it's going to be about managing expectations of both self and of the student and that outcomes are going to be different based on the different classes and students. And it's important to maintain a very realistic expectation. Um, in terms of the null curriculum, the thing I found most interesting was the perspective of Suzanne, um, who said that no curriculum, it almost sounds like it's an intentional thing, but she referred to it more so as a blind spot of the teacher. It's not necessarily intentional, but it's just things that um, maybe that we weren't necessarily taught or that we're not comfortable with teaching. Um, and, and these things are definitely brought to light through working with other colleagues, through having people observe your class and then going and observing their classes. Um, some similar themes that were across the board in terms of the null curriculum. Um, were interdisciplinary, excuse me, interdisciplinary learning and collaborating, and also character development. Um, for example, social responsibility, um, understanding sustainability, and reflective learning. Um, in terms of the hidden curriculum, uh, Sue's response to this was that in the past she used to emphasize um, that students need to get to know her as a teacher in order to develop uh, a relationship. Um, now oftentimes I think that we do kind of some icebreaker things at the beginning of the year to kind of get to know our students, but it's important for them to know us as well, um, obviously within reason. Um, so she would oftentimes integrate that into her curriculum, which wasn't something that was necessarily articulated in the official curriculum, but it's something that she thought was valuable and important. 
Um, when discussing the influences that affect curriculum deliberations, there were definitely varying responses across the board. On the administrative side, from Stacy, the head of school, she said that um, some of the things that affect the curriculum decisions are high school preparation, um, which is a big thing, especially at our school. We like to um, kind of boast about one of one of the highlights is our high school placement. Um, the other thing is funding, um, especially on the French side of things at our school, because we get funding from the French government, it's important for us to align ourselves with their curriculum. Um, and then the last thing is parental influence, which all three of the people that I spoke to kind of touched on the fact that parental influence, though it doesn't um, necessarily affect the curriculum uh, in a large way, it definitely is important. Um, there's definitely push from the parents to prepare kids for uh, high school placement tests and things like that, and we keep that in mind when determining what it is that we're going to teach. Um, from Suzanne's perspective, um, she said that teachers' interests, values, and comfort level definitely um, kind of dictate and help uh, determine what the curriculum is going to be, and also who the kids are, who is the student body, who is it that we're trying to reach. Um, and then lastly, Sue, who's the curriculum coordinator and English teacher, said that one of the things that definitely affects the curriculum deliberations are what teachers experienced when they were students, which is something that we've definitely touched on in this course so far this semester. Um, so it's about reflection, and it's also about location, about the values of the school, uh, about the community that the school is in, and about national, and it, especially in our case as um, a bilingual school, it's about global identity as well. Um, for the last question, how are curricular decisions related to our PPTs? Um, I think that curriculum decisions are definitely reflective of our values as teachers, which are a huge focus in our PPTs. Also, um, what we learned when we were students and what we didn't learn definitely plays a huge role in our curricular decision making. Um, personally, for me, one of my PPTs was provide, to provide accessible and relevant curriculum to my students. Um, so that definitely obviously goes very hand in hand with curriculum decisions. Um, all right, that's it. Until next time. Bye, guys.